let's explore the new filter types that were implemented in Ableton 9.5. Firstly, I ought to say that what defines the sound of a synthesizer is its filter. The color given by the filter is often prevalent in defining the sound of a specific synthesizer. And this is why Ableton's engineers went on and modeled the filters of a few classic synthesizers for us and implemented these filters across the devices in Ableton Live. That includes Auto Filter, Operator, Simpler and Sampler. So I've got here a project that was created prior to 9.5 and therefore I've got an upgrade option here on my filter. If this happens to you, well just hit the upgrade button to access the new filter. Let's compare the two filters, the old one and the new one. Let's load a filter here next to the old one and you'll find that the layout, the interface, it's slightly wider. That's because the filter frequency, the cutoff and its resonance were moved over here to the right hand side of the graph. And this gives a little bit more space here for the new menu to come up. And this is where we can choose the type of filter we want to use. The clean option, that's the old type filter, the one we had prior to 9.5. So that's slightly weaker, more transparent, you could say. This can still very well be used for more transparent filtering. The OSR option stands for OSCAR. OSCAR is a classic British synth that has been modeled already by a few third-party manufacturers, but this is its filter. So I find this filter uh, a good to go for any situation. It's the one filter that will be available for whatever shape you choose on the filter. I'll explain this in a minute. So let's go back to the uh, low-pass filter. And here we have the MS2 option. MS2 stands for MS20, a classic Coke synthesizer. I used to have one. They're really hard to program, but they sound so good. Very organic and the filter of course is very very strong it's probably the strongest of all the filter types we have so more strength more color almost saturating sometimes here we have the SMP the sample option so this is a hybrid this is a hybrid they have modeled between the MS2 and the next one the Pro DJ here so this is a, something that doesn't exist in the real world it's their own interpretation of uh, a correlation you could say between these two filters here so finally yes the, the final option is PRD Pro DJ another classic from Moog you probably know the band Pro DJ they took the name from that synthesizer and this is um, I think the, the most musical of all these new filters it's slightly gentler Another important new option is the morph filter here. It's a new filter shape we didn't have on the old uh, filter. And we could find a morph filter on some of the synths in Ableton Live, but this is the, the first time we see it now in auto filter. So I'll explain how this works in a minute. And um, one of the main differences is the strength, obviously, of that filter. In the previous version, the Q, the resonance, was given in absolute value. We could go to 0 0.2 all the way to 3. And that was our maximum. So the new filter is now in percentage. So it's a relative value. And this lets us go all the way to 125%. So that's 25% extra than the old version. So yeah, quite, quite a strong bounce. You'll find it, it, it is a lot stronger than what we used to have. Okay. So to demonstrate um, the, the strength of that filter, I'm going to bring it over to a new track here. Okay, so this is an empty track. There's no clip playing on there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the resonance down firstly so we don't get blown by the sound. And I'm going to go over to my preferences in my audio tab. And you find that here, I've enabled my sound card as an input. And I've enabled it to have input 1 and 2. Why did I do that? Well, because I want to get some noise into that channel. And I'm going to show you the noise with a spectrum analyzer. There it is. So you see, the spectrum analyzer is already showing us the the floor, the, the floor noise we have on that channel. We can't see it yet in the channel, really. Uh, let's go over to the ins and outs. This is my input level here, and if I bring the input level on my sound card, if I bring it up, you find that yes, the, the graph is changing. You can see now there's a bit of signal picking through. Okay, it's just to show you that there is some floor noise coming from my sound card. Okay, so this is an old sound card. This is why it gives me so much noise. But I find it interesting and useful for what we're going to do. You see, the graph shows it. It goes up and down on the graph as I bring the input up. So I'm not going to bring it all the way up. I've got just enough noise here to play with. And this noise will enable me to show you the strength of the filters. So with the clean filter at first, if I bring the resonance up, the peak is showing on the, 
the spectrum here you can see it right there and I'm going to scroll down sweep down so at the moment yeah nothing happens okay no sounds coming through that's the, the old filter so let's do the same thing now with the new filters let's bring the OSCAR up at first let's let's go over to a, a low pass filter and bring the OSCAR up and as soon as I reach 100% you see we're getting that self oscillation I was talking about here it's not exactly self oscillation because there is a need for some noise to come in but as I go down yeah, you can see you can hear that sine wave so you can see some decrepancies here but they're mostly due to the graph representation okay so it's probably nearer to uh, uh, a sine wave but it's noise I've sent into it so there will be some decrepancies here there you go let's go higher stronger louder richer okay and this is great for sub bass yeah the, the drive doesn't change anything to that it's mostly the resonance that's playing here let's move over to ms2 yeah even stronger yeah so the ms2 is probably the strongest of these new filters by far we have a sample option here slightly cleaner and finally we have the pro dj option here more musical you can see the slope of the filter here is changing for the pro dj it's a slightly gentle gentle slope yeah so more musical as a filter than the others so that's how strong these filters are this sub bass could very well be used for one of your tracks guys that's as good as it gets for sub bass i find cool you could gate it you could maybe resample it through uh, an audio track and then use it uh, for some uh, kind of sub bass sound you would have so that's the new strength Let, let's now move over to uh, an actual sound a musical sound to demonstrate that filter further let's um i've got here two two grooves two uh, samples one i've sampled from a vinyl let's hear it let's bring the filter off yes that's the way that's it so jazzy slightly dull as a sound yeah so i've, I've got that from an, an old vinyl it was really crackly so i cleaned it up so we could play with this and compare the clean one first so that's I'm going to put the resonance up a bit. That's the original filter we used to have. So, rich in a way, lush, but, you know, slightly transparent. So I'm not going to move the resonance uh, at all. I'm just going to keep the same resonance and move to the Oscar. See, the swish is slightly stronger. Mostly around here, where, where the energy of the sound is. Uh, let's move over to the MS2 and back to the clean can't hear that much difference here the idea here now is to bring the drive up and see that is what makes the difference so MS20 now clean so not as strong not as resonant Oscar MS20 sampled Pro DJ. And you see that again the slope of the Pro DJ is slightly gentler. So let's move over to the bass area here and move the resonance up now. On a specific frequency like this. See the Oscar is more transparent. The MS2 stronger. Now you can hear how it resonates. This is a slightly more digital approach, slightly cleaner the sampled version and the Prodigy is slightly more musical again you can hear more of the actual sound behind it there so let, let's let's take another sample um, I've got here a disco loop you, you'll know that loop yeah I'm gonna play it to you first yeah Grease great so let's move over and let's this time enable the LFO and have this kind of movement happening let's bring the uh, spectrum back in so you can see really the movement how lovely is that? Can you can you hear that swish? Almost like a wow wow effect. Let's bring the clean now. It's slightly muddy. I don't yeah, I don't rate that at all. See how rich this is? Brilliant. So I'm gonna bring it up a little bit to demonstrate. Now, I'm going to push the resonance even further, right, in the drive. Uh, we're starting to hear saturation here, so th there's obviously a, a musical limit to what we can do here. But I'm just going to bring the resonance up. Wow, this is screaming. I I'm tempted to say disgusting, which is a good thing. 
screaming sounds. Amazing. You probably know that the auto filter has two filters within, and you can enable that if you bring the phase up. And you can hear now the left and the right hand side are filtered differently in turns. So, so there's in fact two filters within that auto filter, two channels, two paths. And to finish with this demo, we ought to look at the new morphing filter here. So this filter will turn the filter from a low pass to a band pass, here you go, over to a high pass and then a nudge filter and back to a low pass filter. Let's hear the sweeping effect it does. Really interesting, eh? There you go. Let's take the LFO down. Here we go. So all the way anti-clockwise now. And sweeping through all these effects. So we can really find a sweet point here with the frequency. There. Bring the resonance down a bit. So I'd like to automate that so you can record an automation using your clip envelopes or your track automations. But there's another trick I'd like to show you just to finish with. Let's go over to Max for Live. I hope you've installed Max for Live. And here in the Max audio effect, let's go and fetch the LFO. So the LFO is a low frequency oscillator. It's an automatic and cyclic movement we can implement wherever we want across the platform. So let's hit the map button here and map the morph button. It's got a little slower here, and let's hear the result. You can see the morphing happening automatically for us. See that movement? Automatic cyclic movement for me. That's in time. Let's now synchronize. Like so. See, that's musical, that's in time with our tune. So that's the morphing filter for you. That's it, we've looked at all the filter types. Remember, these filters are found on auto filter, operator, simpler, and sampler.